Hello students, today we are going to continue with the same topic of moment of inertia. I uh, hope you saw yesterday's video which uh, deals with uh, the basics of rotational motion and uh, how we are shifting from linear motion to the rotational motion and what are the various parameters which governs that both of them are together related with one another. So the important aspect of the entire rotation motion is inertia. Similarly, the important aspect of motion also inertia. So Newton's law of motion, the first law of motion itself, it happens to come because there is an inertia which is there. A body is at rest and uh, the mass is at rest and if the body has to move, you need to give a force. So the force which has been given mainly because of the property by virtue where the body cannot move that is called inertia. Because of inertia force came and because of the force we are able to have Newton's three laws of motion and finally we found force is going to be equal to mass and acceleration. In a similar way, in a similar way we also now see in an axis rot of rotation if this is an axis of rotation and there is a body which is there and if this body has to rotate along the axis here, it has to go around, right? So what happens? We need to give a force and that force is not a force we call here, we call it as a torque. Now if there is a torque here, we have here a mass and now here we don't call it as a mass, we call it as, because mass is a uh, basic factor of mass is the basic of inertia here. Inertia is because of the mass. Similarly, here a huge mass is there, of course, but we don't call it just like the mass, we call it as moment of inertia here. The similar parallel of mass moving in a straight line, here in this one, we call it as moment of inertia. Please remember, if you call here in linear motion as mass, here we call this body which is there as moment of inertia. Now can you, ah, you can ask me, sir, okay, we call it moment of inertia. Does this not have a mass itself? Yes, it has its mass. It has its mass. It has its radius also. So the moment of inertia is actually the product of mass and square of radius. You already saw this one. So this moment of inertia is actually a product of mass and square of the distance which is there. So we don't call it as the inertial mass, we call it as a rotational inertia. Like a rot inertial mass is this m and we call it as a rotational inertia is moment of inertia that is i we call but i is equal to mr square. So torque is equal to, be equal to I into alpha it will become there is an angular acceleration. This is a linear acceleration, it's angular acceleration. This is a mass, which is a inertial mass, and here it is going to be moment of inertia. This is a force, this is a torque. That is the way in which it will be there. Torque is called the I alpha. I'm trying to give you an analogy how it changes from force is equal to mass into acceleration is equal to torque into I alpha. Mm -hmm. But here I am impressing on a very important fact that here there is mass and here there is moment of inertia. Rest everything is quite okay. Force and torque, acceleration and acceleration, but mass and moment of inertia. Please remember that. So what is moment of inertia is the product of mass and the square of the radius from the axis of rotation. Whatever the axis of rotation is, that is called moment of inertia. So you can, I will just give a comparison. I will just give one more example here and then we will move forward. So suppose there is a disc. So there is a disc and we got a value here this is capital R this is a uniform disk similarly I have a axis of rotation the in same thing it is there in a form of a ring I have I have the same thing in a form of a ring and there is axis of rotation here Entire mass is this one and entire mass is here, same mass. 
and this also has a radius r now the question is which one will have more moment of inertia will it be this one will have more moment of inertia this will have more moment of inertia so according to the calculation it is moment of inertia is equal to m r square for this one m r square by 2 for this one and here this moment of inertia is going to be equal to m r square we will be soon learning this both of them in the, the calculation so moment of inertia is m r square here but m of moment of inertia is m r square by 2 why there is a difference here is it not the mass same this also mass is same this also mass is same radius is same radius is same but the moment of inertia when you talk about here since the mass is spread completely together in the entire of the um, place entire of the disk place so it is m r square by 2 will be there because it is totally covered but here all the mass is concentrated at the rim because all the mass is concentrated at the rim this has more moment of inertia so what is the reason now how do we consider here how will the moment more the moment of inertia is there when a mass is more at that end of the place more distance from the center of axis then more moment of inertia suppose you have a body here like this and you are trying to keep it in a large distance and then rotate it the body rotates this body is rotating along the axis here then you will have more moment of inertia this will have more moment of if you take it a little more further more moment of inertia is there because more the distance r square is more because of that more moment of inertia is there so here also the all the masses considered at the rim it has more moment of inertia please remember, understand that you can draw this one okay now i'm just explaining the concept of moment of inertia which is having the formula here and there are some examples here please write this example here and moment of inertia has a parallel with the mass of a body itself right now the next one is radius of gyration radius of gyration what is radius of gyration okay now if you have a body here maybe there is a body which is here I always take an irregular lamina. Well, let us take an irregular thing, right? And this body has a center of mass here. This is CM. Now, from here, we made a axis of rotation. This is the axis of rotation here, right? This is called this O. But this is the center of mass. Now, what is radius of gyration is the perpendicular distance. The perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass this is called radius of gyration. It is just a distance. I am again repeating. It is just a distance. And the perpendicular distance from the center of mass. Sorry, from the center of mass to the axis of rotation. That perpendicular distance is called radius of gyration. Okay. So, radius of gyration of this particular body. This particular body has the radius of gyration like this. Now, look at this one. The radius of gyration of a body about an axis of rotation is defined as the radial distance of a party of a point from the axis of rotation at which if the whole mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated its moment of inertia about the given axis would be the same as that of the actual distribution of mass All right so again i'm repeating radius of gyration of the body is about an axis is defined as what is the difference? It is just a distance, it is just a radial distance of a point from the axis of rotation. Now, what is the axis of rotation here? So, this is the axis of rotation. So, a point the distance from the axis of rotation, okay, distance from the axis of rotation at which if the whole mass of the body is assumed to be concentrated, so it is from the center of mass to the axis of rotation here this distance is called the um, radius of gyration so you can also write it as suppose if this is a place so i is going to be equal to m k square this is k the moment of inertia is could be called as m k square all right because 
if this axis is going to be here itself, the entire mass is going to be concentrated here itself. Okay, that distance, if you see from here to here, because the entire mass is supposed to be concentrated, we can call this as the capital M itself, the total mass here itself, because the whole mass is supposed to be concentrated here. So we can tell it is as M itself here, because center of mass is a place where the whole mass is supposed to be concentrated. We can call it as total mass. And then K is the distance here, so it is called radius of gyration. So this is the way in which it is there, where K is, what is K? K is radius of gyration. Okay, so please draw this diagram. Make this diagram, make this one. And then you can write. So what is K square is going to be equal to? I upon M. And what is K is going to be equal to? Under root of I upon M. So that's the way it is. Okay. So... The square root of the ratio of moment of inertia of a body this is what k is equal to i upon m square root of moment of inertia of a body about a given axis of rotation to the mass of the radius of gyration of the bod uh, body about the given axis. So that's what the thing is. The physical significance of radius of gyration, the total mass of the rotating body may be supposed to be concentrated at a radial distance k from the axis of rotation. So far as the moment of inertia of the body about that axis is concentrated. So, so that's it. It is the entire mass of this entire irregular body is supposed to be concentrated at the center of mass. So, remember that this whole body is not there. It is just the entire thing is piece is supposed to be concentrated here. So, from the axis of rotation, so it is going to be just a distance here. So, that is the way in which it is going to be measured. Right. So, radius of creation is just a distance. All right. So we will move forward to the next part of it. Please write the definition from here itself or the definition which I have told in the video. That's also fine. So you can write and you need to write the expression. We will go to the next one. Theorems of parallel and perpendicular axis. So that is called perpendicular axis theorem, parallel axis theorem. There are two axis theorems there. What is this axis theorem you are talking about? So, I will just give you a brief of to find, to find moment of inertia. To find moment of inertia, there are two theorems are there. What are two theorems? One is called perpendicular axis theorem. Next one is parallel axis theorem. Perpendicular axis theorem, parallel axis theorem. Okay. So, if you want to find moment of inertia of any body, you have to depend on two of the theorems. Either you have to depend on perpendicular axis theorem or a parallel axis theorem depending on the situation. So, what is this perpendicular axis theorem you are going to find out? Now, moment of inertia is anyhow, we know the formula, that is, I is going to be equal to mR square. Now, you can say, sir, we already know moment of inertia we have found out. This is the formula. What is the need of these two theorems here? Remember one important factor here. I'll just try to explain, then we'll go ahead to this theorem. Now, always I've been seeing, saying only one axis, I'm always making it like this I made it like this and then I told like this now the question arises sir this axis I only choose and I force yourself to choose only this axis I told always okay consider axis like this the question comes sir can't we have an axis like this where this is axis and the body rotates like this the body makes a rotation like this or the body makes a rotation like this is it possible is it possible that this body and I make an axis here and the body rotates like this? Can't we make an axis somewhere in our own choices? So that makes it a kind of a, a 
given a situation we find this axis of rotation can be anything wherever you feel like doing it you can do it it is not necessary that sir has made this axis of rotation it has to be always like this no it can be like this it can be like this or it can be even like this also a slanting axis but the entire thing is rotating like this anything could be possible if there is different axis of rotation is going combination is going to be possible you need to have some theorem to calculate when the axis is taken in different different positions different different points we need to have theorems because of that we are trying to understand what theorem it is i hope you have a better idea basically this is m i is equal to m r square is a basic general formula of moment of inertia but axis of rotation can be different when the axis of rotation is different moment of inertia value also will be different so we need to definitely we cannot always use this formula um it is a general sense of formula but we cannot completely say always it is mr square half mr uh, m capital r square but it will be constantly changing according to the axis of rotation so let us start with the first thing is parallel sorry perpendicular axis theorem mm. now draw this diagram here we consider as a huge big mass right mm. and this huge big mass has a center of mass here we call it a c and we will draw a dotted line here dotted line is a line where if you consider this is the axis right this is the axis and it can go through the center of mass then everything will be quite balanced completely balanced but now we are going to have some other axis we are going to have some other axis let this will be the axis of rotation which is called as we call it as a and we call it as b this is the axis of rotation right and uh, it has a distance here the distance between the parallel distance is going to be called as a a is the distance between the center of mass if the center of mass has axis of rotation suppose if the center of mass is there and we have axis of rotation on the center of mass and we already shifted the axis of rotation to some other distance what is the distance between them it is a now consider any point p here then there will be having a mass m of the particle and this particle is at a distance of r from the axis of rotation right so this is the axis of rotation which is here so this mass is now at a distance from the actual rotational axis is this is the actual rotational axis it is going to be r plus a but this is an a is the distance here this is a and this is r total distance how much it is r plus a from the axis of rotation okay now write down consider consider a lamina a lamina let c be the center of mass let c be the center of mass consider an axis of rotation parallel to the axis of center of mass consider an axis of rotation ab ab is the axis of rotation parallel to the axis of the center of mass at a distance a so ab is the axis of rotation now the next line you got to write let p be a point at a distance r from the axis of center of mass let p be a point at a distance r from a distance of r from the axis of center of mass with a mass m the distance of the distance of the mass from the actual axis of rotation is r plus a 
the distance of a mass m from the actual axis of rotation is a and r, r plus a. Alright, so you can write this as, how can you write this as, therefore, moment of inertia of the particle of mass m from a b what you can write here i is going to be equal to m times of r plus a the whole square now total moment of inertia of all the particles for all the particles how it is way i is going to be equal to summation of m into r plus a the whole square right so i is going to be equal to summation of m into r square plus a square plus 2 r a so i is going to be equal to summation of m r square plus summation of m a square plus summation of 2 into m into r into a now here, one thing is, this is called a parallel axis theorem. This is called a parallel axis theorem. I think I have made a very very important big mistake here. Please, I am very sorry to say that. This is not perpendicular axis theorem, it is a parallel axis theorem. Parallel axis theorem. Okay, we are talking about a parallel axis theorem. That is the reason parallelly axis has been drawn. Yeah, the parallel axis. Okay. So this is the parallel axis here now in this parallel axis everywhere there is a is going to be similar a is similar a is going to be a constant here a is a constant a is a constant here 2 is also a constant so we can take this constant outside summation of m r square plus a square you can take it outside summation of m a is outside because it is going to be similar 2 a will be outside summation of m into r Okay, now we are almost close to the end of this final derivation addition and we are going to get the formula of a parallel axis theorem. So the parallel axis theorem is going to be this part, this part is going to be equal to 0. Why this is 0 is because the value of mass and radius, it has an equal moment of force all the places, so it balances together. So it becomes equal to zero. Let us assume a body like this. I'll just give you an example here. This is the center of mass. So here it is going to have a mass here. Here also another mass could be there. This is also here and this is also here. R and R, another distance so equal. So this two of both of them it will get equal and opposite to each other and get balanced. This is also here pulling, this is also here pulling, it is going to be balanced here. Similarly, another one also it is here and another one also will get balanced here if you get an R and R for another equal distance. So, if you look at the product of M into R, the product of M into R, mass into the radius, that is called moment of force. This is also mass into the distance, mass into the distance, the moment of force. Of all the moment of forces will be there, it gets balanced. So the sum of all the moment of force of different different particles, it always has an another exact mirror image of that, so it becomes zero. Having said this is equal to zero, so you can write down in bracket, in the bracket you can write down the moment of force of the body from the, of all the particles from the center of mass, m, summation of m into r, summation of m into r is going to be equal to zero. So what is the rest of them? Rest of them what is that? It is going to be equal to I is equal to here summation of M. What is summation of M? Capital M and A square. A square plus this is the value. It is going to be equal to summation of M R square. So you get this as the final formula for parallel axis theorem. Alright. 
So parallel axis theorem is this one. In other words, you can also say this one as you can also say this one as if this is the way it's there, i is going to be equal to m a square plus i center of mass. This is going to be i center of mass. What is i center of mass? Mass into square of the distance. Now what is mass of square of the distance? Mass is here and square of the distance from the axis of rotation. So everywhere wherever the mass is there from the axis of rotation, the summation is going to be the moment of inertia along the center of mass. So that's going to be ICM, you can say. So this is going to be the final formula of parallel axis theorem. Okay. Shall we go ahead and see once again how it came and finally we'll define this one also before going for a definition. Now look at this one. Consider a whole lamina. This is the center of axis from the center of mass. This is a parallel. We have taken another axis. This is called parallel axis theorem at a distance A. Consider any point here P from a distance R from the center of mass. So the total distance from the axis of rotation is A plus R. So that's what we have written here. I is equal to M into R plus A the whole square. So we took the value here for all the particles from the axis of rotation for all the particles. So it's going to be summation of m into r plus a the whole square. So it's going to be given as the expanded value and you go into the summation of everything. This entire part will become 0 because the moment of force of m into r is always equal to 0. So this will become 0 and these two will survive. But here m into a square is called as a square can be outside. So a summation of mass is the total mass. And summation of m into r square, summation of m into r square is going to be the moment of inertia of the body from the center of mass. So it's going to be i c m center of mass. So you get this value. Can you define this one? How can you define this? So you can write down the by definition the parallel axis theorem is defined as the moment of inertia of a body about any axis. is equal to the moment of inertia of the moment of inertia along the center of mass about the parallel axis through the center of mass plus the product of mass and the product of mass of the body and square of the distance, perpendicular distance, square of the perpendicular distance A between the two axes. When you have to define it, just you have to just read this formula itself. How would I am again saying that? What is that one? The moment of inertia about any axis, this is moment of inertia of any axis, is equal to is equal to moment of inertia about the parallel axis through the center of mass. Now look at this one. This is the any axis. This, one. this is the any axis. Okay. For this axis, take the moment of inertia of the parallel to this one, parallel to this particular thing through the center of mass. Take this one through the center of mass and this is the one you are going to find out. This moment of inertia is going to be equal to the moment of inertia parallel to the given axis through the center of mass that is ICM plus the product of now this one the product of the entire mass and the square of the distance between the two axes is a square. So please write down the definition rightly state and prove parallel axis theorem will come. So that's the way you need to derive this. Okay. Now the next one that's the last one we will go to find out the next one called now only we are going to see perpendicular axis theorem. Perpendicular axis theorem. Again consider a big lamina and this is the value where the axis of rotation is there. Right. Now we are going to consider an axis here. This is an axis here, here, and this is an axis also here. Right. So this is x, this is y, 
right? And this is set. So there are three axes here. This is X and Y. So this lamina is now under rotation. It's going on a rotation. Let us consider a point P with a mass M at a distance R. So this is R is a distance. Okay. Now write down first of all. First line you can write down. Consider a lamina rotating about an axis Z. This is actually rotating about this axis Z. Z axis it is rotating. Let P be a particle with mass small m. Let P be a particle with mass small m at a distance r from the axis of rotation. At a distance r from the axis of rotation. Therefore, I is going to be equal to m r square. I is equal to m r square. Moment of inertia of all the particles. Moment of inertia of all the particles, what is this to be? I is going to be equal to summation of m r square. Total moment of inertia of all the particles. That's what it is. Now what happens here is, now look at this one. Well, let us consider what happens if this body is wants to rotate in this axis. Along this axis. If the this same mass is going to rotate like this. Are you able to see a circular path? Because it is rotating along this axis. This entire body is not rotating along this axis. Forget about this axis. You are going to rotate this axis. So what happens here? It will rotate in this way. This is the direction y. And here also y can be the distance. Right? Because it is having a y distance from this axis of rotation of x. Similarly, we can also make this body to rotate in this axis also. So, if it is rotating in this axis, what happens? It will have this as a distance. X will be the distance. Alright, this body will be having a rotation most like this. It will be moving like this. With a radius X. If it has to rotate this way. So, there are three possibilities we are talking about. Look at this one. You can either rotate through the exact axis. This way rotation it is possible. That is the reason R will be the radius. It will be going like this. And it could be rotating along an x-axis. It will be rotating in this direction. So it will be moving in this direction. Or it could be rotating along the y-axis here. The entire body will be going along this direction. It will be just going along this direction here. This is this axis. So having said that, you can write down now, if the body, if the body of mass m rotates along x-axis, if the body rotates along x-axis, then ix is going to be equal to summation of m y square. Am I right? It is y is the distance summation of y square where y is the distance between where y is distance between x axis and particle the next line the next line is if the particle rotates along the axis of y-axis, if the particle rotates along y-axis, then iy is going to be equal to summation of m into x square. Summation of m into x square, where x is distance between axis and which axis? Axis y and particle p. Right. Now, these two things are so important now. Now, we'll come back to this one. Okay, we'll come back to this one. Look at this one. This is O. This is R. This is Y. This is also called as X. This is, if this is X, this is also X here. Right. And this is going to be the 
right triangle right angle triangle this is the hypotenuse this is the x axis this is the y axis are you able to see a right triangle here this is the radius here so if you take p o and maybe q is this one in triangle o p q in triangle o p q what is r square is going to be equal to x square plus y square all right this is a one so you write here you put this value here so i is going to be equal to summation of m into x square plus y square r is been removed x square plus y square has come right so if this is the value here how do we take this further if that is the value take this further now so i is going to be equal to summation of m x square plus summation of m y square because we have just taken it inside we just taken it inside now so what is m x square what is summation of m x square that's going to be i y i y plus what is summation of m y square that is i x that is going to be called as i z this is i z so here i z is going to be equal to i x plus i y this is called perpendicular axis theorem so what is the perpendicular axis theorem suppose if you have an axis here okay this is the axis here z axis then you can find out i x you can find out the i x if the body is rotating in this angle also that is x axis and you can also find out the way in which the body rotates in this axis also that is y axis z axis only we know but you can find out like this also so i y plus i x is going to be i z so that's the way it has to be concluded so now we will write that definition here the moment of inertia of a uniform plane lamina please write down the moment of inertia about a uniform plane lamina this is a plane lamina here about an axis perpendicular to its plane this is this axis is perpendicular to the plane this is perpendicular to this plane about an axis perpendicular to the plane is equal to the sum of moment of inertia is equal to the sum of moment of inertia these two sum of moment of inertia of any two mutually perpendicular axis in its plane any two mutually perpendicular axis in its plane intersecting on the first axis intersecting on the first axis so i am again repeating if this is the moment of inertia you know that is equal to the sum of moment of inertia of y and sum of moment of inertia of x so any two moment of inertia is perpendicular to this one this is perpendicular here and this is the perpendicular here all right so any two moment of inertia which is mutually perpendicular to this one intersecting so that's what it is all right children with this i close please read this one again carefully lots of things i need to really explain well so i have just slowly moved ahead we'll go to the next lesson tomorrow to learn more about this applications thank you